Welcome back to another video on the Windows command line. Today I would like to talk about task list and how we can manipulate task list to take a look at all the processes that are running on your machine and how we can actually manipulate those processes by using the Windows command line. As with any new command, what we want to do is we want to take a look at task list and we're going to run the help and take a look at what we're doing. So it gives us some examples here of how we can actually apply it. And we will be using some of these commands uh, below. They're all right here. You can come through and review these. The description is here. This tool displays a list of currently running processes on either a local or a remote machine which is good for us as penetration testers. Once we breach a network, we can easily pivot around and take a look at other segments of the network and see what is running and what processes are there. And then we can manipulate those processes. So the first thing I would like to do is just run the task list command by itself. So by running that, it gives all of the processes and it just dumps those processes out. It gives us the image name, the ID number of the process, the session name, the session number, and also the memory usage and uh, these are in kilobytes. So there's a long list of them and you can see that there are a lot of these service host processes and so for a penetration tester we can make good use of these processes especially if the person or persons that are in charge of protecting the perimeter are not familiar with what these processes do so let's let's go a little bit further and let's run the task list by module so the slash m will do that and what this does is this breaks it down by individual process name and number and then it shows all of the modules that are associated. For instance, we can go a step further and we can actually look at the individual modules and the way to do that is task list slash m and then whatever the module name is. So these are DLL files. So uh, we're just going to pull up ntdll.dll. And we can see what this module is associated with, what processes it's associated with. So we can easily go back and, and take a look at that. Now, I want to do a search for the service host exe processes. I want to see all of those. So to do that I'm going to use task list and I'm going to pipe find slash i slash c svc host dot exe and we'll close and take a look. So we have 17 instances of this running and again if the person or persons guarding the perimeter of the network are not intimately familiar with these processes they can easily be migrated into and exploited. Let's take a look by their image name now and to do that we're going to run task list slash fi image name equals s vchost.exe and we'll close it off. Here we have all of those listed. So we showed 17 and there are 17 listed with the process identification number there as well. So again just another way of looking at these. Now if we run the task list again of course we get this list of processes what if we really wanted to see maybe the processes that were eating up a lot of our CPU? 
so a lot of our energy from our computer is is maybe being taken up so let's do a search for anything that is over 30,000 K as a starter let's run task list slash FI memory usage GT 30,000 close the quotation slash FO and let's put that in a table so here we have the processes that are over 30k giving us some problems maybe they are really weighing heavy on our system we can easily go back and we can amend this uh, like for instance if we're just looking for the real CPU hogs we could look at that 90,000 and we're only going to get one as you can see so different ways that you can search this uh, then you can do some research on the individual process if it's something maybe you need to get rid of then we can go back and we can delete it by the process ID number right there let's run task list and let's just find a number in here let's say 2612 and let's look at that individual process process ID equals and let's put that number in there 26 12 parenthesis so we can call that up that way as well so these are all the same way of pulling up the process and looking at it this is an easy way to pull up individual process if you have the process ID number now what I'd like to do is I would like to use notepad since it's a common process notepad.exe we can start it and kill it fairly easily without it affecting the user's computer another one that's good is calculator for this so you could easily once you breach the network you could easily migrate into notepad or into calculator either one and the systems administrator may or may not pick up on the fact that one of these is open and maybe not ask why is it open so sometimes as a penetration tester you can slide right under the radar with one of those being open because it's something that they are used to seeing so I'm gonna pull up task list I'm gonna pipe that to find forward slash I forward slash C and notepad if I run this to see there are no instances of notepad running I would like to go ahead and start an instance of notepad so I just type that into the command line and it opens right up so it's easy to see that I do have one open however let's go back and run the search command again and we do in fact have one instance of notepad open now if we want to kill this process it's fairly easy to do we can just do a task kill and we can do that by process ID but we're going to need to know what process that is if I run task list slash FI image name equals notepad.exe we can see the instance of notepad and the process ID so I want to go ahead and kill this process right now so I just do task kill forward slash PID and the PID number is 940 and as you could see behind there that window went away and we had success sent termination to that process number now let's run that search process again and we do have zero open so a good way to kind of look at starting and killing a process now as you can imagine being able to throttle a CPU or crash the computer is good for a penetration tester in some ways we may want to actually breach the network and start many instances of these fairly normal processes 
like notepad and calculator but start a lot of them so that it really starts tearing the system down and really being a CPU hog. I want to show you a, a quick way of starting multiple instances once we're inside the perimeter. So this command is a loop. We're going to start with 4 slash L percent I N open the parenthesis 1 1 and 20. 20 is going to be the number of instances. Do at notepad dot exe and so if we start that it's going to start and it's going to create 20 instances of notepad now I can spread these out a little bit and we can look at them we're certainly not going to look at at all 20 of these but you kind of get the point here there are multiple instances now to know for sure how many uh, we're going to need to run that task list and look at the number of instances and sure enough we have 20 instances not a bad way to start multiple instances and honestly you could put whatever number you wanted in here now I would caution you while working with this in your lab be careful not to set this thing at too many instances because again it will crash your system and especially if you started multiple instances of maybe notepad and calculator as well what we want to do now and what the security administrator wants to do in this case as these things are popping up he or she wants to be able to end these fairly quickly and to do that we're going to use a WMIC command and obviously using it the first time I'd like for us to take a look at it so WMIC slash question mark and we can kinda of take a look at what we have so these are uh, commands that you can use with this and you can break the command itself down into several different pieces the piece that we're looking for is the process piece so I'm gonna press the key so that we can go on a little bit further in the search and we're looking to go down to the P's for process management so this is the option that I would like to use I'm gonna press the Q so that I can exit out of that and so let's run WMIC process because that is what we're going to be working with where name equals notepad dot exe we want to delete so as you can see each one of these processes went through and they executed and they actually stop the process and it gives the process handle number here all the way down through there and you could also see that all the windows behind the command line went away also we can go back in and we can run this command again and we see that there are actually zero instances of notepad running 